Join in singing our gathering hymn number 41 on Jordan's Bank, song number 4 1.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the God who is, who was, and who is to come be with you all. Let us prepare the way for the Lord more fully and faithfully to enter our hearts. Let us acknowledge our sins and thus prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, 
and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, Be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. The very obvious link and connection between the prophecy of Isaiah, our first reading, and the beginning of the Gospel according to Mark is clear. It is the fulfillment of that prophecy. Behold, I'm sending my messenger. He will prepare your way. A voice crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. As I said last week, we are not living these days getting ready for a trip down memory lane, celebrating only the fact that Jesus came in history. But as the second reading reminded us powerfully, he will come again. And we live every moment in expectation of that coming, not in fear, but to seize every opportunity, for we might not have another. But what opportunities? Again, the prophet says that when the Lord promises, he promises that he will bring comfort to his people, consolation. And so today, as we are sent forth, as John was in his time, as we are sent forth in our time and place, not to draw attention to ourselves, for as John said, I'm not the one. There's one mightier than I, but to point to him, not to water him down, not to live in such a way in which his truth seems to just be some nice opinions among many, but by the primacy that his truth holds in our life, by the foundation it is for us, we lead others to come to know him. However, if we're going to do that, then we have to recognize the modus operandi that the prophet tells us of God himself. Like a shepherd, he gathers them in his arms, the passage concluded, holding them close to his heart. It's that desire and love for all to be saved that leads us to be messengers of the gospel. Not critics, not condemners, not people who separate the them and the us. Because I'll tell you, in all of my years of priesthood, honest people have admitted that it is sometimes those who were the furthest from God, who when they finally grasped the faith, shook up a lot of people who had never left the pews, but who were on automatic pilot for years. And yet God used them, those nobodies. Those people weren't doing what we were doing to wake us up. Are we open to that? Do we heed the call to remove the obstacles of God coming into our life? The mountains that we build, or unfortunately sometimes the failure to recognize the good we are in ourselves, and how God can use us, the valleys that need to be filled in so that the Lord can enter fully into the lives of those we encounter by our word, by our witness. We are to be bearers of good news, not depressing news, but in our times we have to recognize that we're not to be bearers of a lie. And that's where many people are going off track. Well, I don't discuss this with so-and-so. I know that, so I just want to be nice. I don't want to get into a fight. Well, we're not called to get into fights, but we are called to love enough to speak the truth. Someone once said, for a long time, I avoided saying certain things to certain people, you know, because it was awkward. 
until he said, I realized eternity is worth being willing to be awkward. There are eternal consequences. We don't stand in judgment of anyone, but I hope we all stand in longing for all, in the words of scripture, to come to the understanding of the truth that they might live in God. Indeed, we will celebrate at Christmas that he transformed very ordinary things by his coming. May we in these Advent days open ourselves to the transformation that can happen in other lives by letting him come through our words and our example and our faith. I commend so many of you who have not waited till the last days but have already embraced the most important preparation for Christmas that has nothing to do with cleaning your house or cooking your food or decorating the tree, although I hope you're well along with those too but preparing your soul. I commend so many who have already come to confession, not only for emphasizing that they understand that gift, but for also recognizing that I'm the only priest here. And that even though we offer the opportunity at least once a day, every day, it's wonderful to be able to celebrate your response to God's invitation in your life. I rejoice in hope when I see more and more coming to understand, not shrugging their shoulders, well, it's just how I am, but beginning to understand all we can be if we lower some mountains and fill in some valleys. May each one of us first prepare our own soul for the Lord to enter fully, and then by the way we live and example we set, prepare the way for him to nudge those who are on the periphery. Our goal is to be the one the prophet tells us is his goal, that he might gather all into his embrace and hold them close to his heart. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. <coughs> Light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. And for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To the shepherd and guardian of our souls, we lift our needs. For the church, may our words and witness help those around us to perceive the light of Christ that dispels the darkness of our secular society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to embrace a good and honest confession as the most important way to prepare for Christmas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for all who seek to bring them comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek peace and for all who protect the innocent against violence, terrorism, and deeds of darkness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the needs we carry in our hearts, 
and for all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal joy for all our departed loved ones, especially Helen Island, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All this, Father, we ask confidently through Christ our Lord. Please join us as we prepare our gifts this evening with song number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, song number 39. sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your praise of the Lord our Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, since we have no merits to plead our cause. Come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst and we're gathered by his love. And when is once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, whom you seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and offer you the bread of life and chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. 
Grant by the power of the spirit of your love, we be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops. In a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and conquer. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known and admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and the resurrection, give them fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray. Pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer a sign of peace. sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not heard that you should enter into my room, but only the Lord is
Please join in singing song number 614, Like a Shepherd, song number 614. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we enter the second week of Advent, be sure to check out the bulletin for, uh, as I mentioned, the daily opportunities for confession tomorrow night, even song. It was wonderful to see so many of you with us last Sunday night. The details are in the bulletin. Tomorrow is the last even song. The following weekend, next Saturday night, we welcome a wonderful choral group that we've had the blessing of welcoming over the past couple of years with expert singers from New Hampshire and Massachusetts. We will have solemn choral even song for Gaudete, the Sunday of rejoicing in Advent. That's seven o'clock next Saturday night. So perhaps you want to arrange to have a nice dinner next Saturday and then come back and celebrate Gaudete with the beautiful choral music that will be offered here. So all of that with other details, as well as the reminder about Thursday night's Rorate Mass, the Candlelight Mass. It was wonderful again to see so many of you experience what has become a beautiful tradition in our parish. So there's a whole page on Advent. The Christmas schedule is also realized that weekend. There are two distinct celebrations. There is the Sunday obligation and the Holy Day, Christmas. It's not a two-for-one sale. Um, both are very important individual celebrations, and even how we approach that says something about our understanding. So that's very, very clear in the bulletin. Also, thanks to so many who have contributed to the Easter Flower Fund. A reminder, if you want the names included, 
in the memorial listing. Uh, I think Tuesday is the deadline. Check the bulletin out for that. But the uh, flower offering envelopes uh, can also be turned in next week. They are at the doors near the bulletins. Each year, as the calendar year ends, many look at charitable giving for tax purposes, and also many parishioners recognize all they've been blessed with and include us on their Christmas gift list. That's called the Christmas Extra Effort Appeal. So thank you in advance for what you do. The bulletin has details about that, particularly if you're transferring money from some special account. Uh, just let us know that. But all of that's in the bulletin, and again, in advance, thank you for whatever you do for the extra effort at Christmas. Our young adults, those 18 to 30-somethings, Sienna Sorority, Ladies Happens, Tuesday, Frasati Fraternity at my house on Thursday. We're bumping them up a week with Christmas coming. Therefore, the RSVP deadline for Sienna is tomorrow night, and guys, it's Monday night. Uh, the guys will be coming to the Rorate Mass and then over for dinner at Viani House. Also, there'll be a caroling night uh, for young adults, uh, and all of that information is in that column. Next Sunday at both 8.30 and 10.30 Mass, we'll be offering a blessing for parents who are expecting the birth of a child, and also couples who are hoping to conceive. Uh, we have been blessed. We had another. Little John Paul was born this week. Uh, we have a wonderful new life welcoming in our community. So. Blessing of expected parents is next week. All the other details are clear in the bulletin. If you do not get the Christmas wafers yet to use at the Christmas dinner, those are on, on the left-hand corner with the green sheets that explain. The Lord be with you. Be with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join us as we go forth with song number 63, Ready the Way. Song number 63. 